Hello, my name is Will Myrick. I'm part of a company called Insco. Uh, I want to share with you some research that I've been working on relative to uh, lore, RF ranging, and GNU radio. Uh, so past couple of years, I've been talking about um, using GNU radio and RTLSDRs to do GPS beamforming. This year, I'm going to twist it around a little bit and actually start looking at LoRa and showing how um, you can leverage LoRa, actually do RF ranging on LoRa um, with these uh, with these RTL uh, SDRs. So let's sort of give a background, or at least of what we're trying to do here. Um, everyone knows that the Internet of Things is exploding, right, in terms of uh, different type of devices, uh, there's different type of protocols out there. LoRa is one of the most uh, important ones that will allow uh, devices to uh, be leveraged in the IoT framework. Uh, what's interesting, though, is that these IoT devices actually provide a very useful set of features uh, that could be leveraged uh, in terms of um, RF aiding. And so when I say RF aiding, I'm talking about PNT. You know, assume GPS is not available to you and you're trying to figure out where do you, you know, where is your location relative to someone else. Uh, and so you can use RF aiding PNT type of uh, approaches to support um, different type of scenarios where you don't have GPS. So one idea is uh, potentially using LoRa as, uh, as a way of leveraging or being that complementary PNT. One thing that's nice about LoRa is, of course, you know, the long range, uh, more than 10 kilometers. It's low cost in terms of the IoT transceiver constructs. And it um, you know, provides low power consumption. So it's some, in some instances, you can operate it for, for um, many years. The majority of the modules, though, like access to the physical layer to support PNT directly. When I say that, it means access to uh, actual the, the ability to, 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 I mean, you can always get, you can always get the, 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 the um, signal strength, but I'm looking for like information associated with the phase, carrier phase information and things like that. A lot of times you don't have access to that. So one idea is, is there a way to, to leverage GNU radio, uh, prototype sort of like a lower RF ranging uh, Python block that will allow you to, without requiring access to the physical layer of a particular transceiver, um, still get ranging information. So that means two-way ranging between two devices that are uh, normally operating just with the standard comms, but being able to listen in on that and then provide ranging information. Uh, so one of the devices that I'll be talking about uh, in the presentation is, is the PyCom device. Uh, that is the uh, device that they're calling the, the, the LoPi. It has LoRa on it, has Bluetooth, and has Wi-Fi. So a lot of the IoT transceiver technology devices that are coming out now, they're multifunction, so they can, they can you know, become whatever you want it to be in terms of these protocols. What's also interesting is that they have what they call MicroPython. So it's embedded Python within a microcontroller. So that means there are a lot of different things you can do with this particular device, uh, and especially when it comes to LoRa. And, and, I'll, talk, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that um, later on. So what I ended up doing was, in order to create this little lower RF range of Python block, uh, I wanted to actually create the block as well as create a sort of low cost experimental RF ranging system. So what I have is what I'm calling the, uh, the PUGS. Uh, so PNT sub gigahertz software defined radio. And this is a, a picture of, of uh, the, the PUG setup that actually uh, incorporates um, both a, 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 a GNU radio um, construct as well as uh, these embedded transceivers uh, and also leveraging the RTL SDR. So I'm using the RTL SDR as a passive receiver while I'm actively uh, transmitting between the two low pi devices. And I had a, an experiment I was able to do to actually show, show this, this, this whole concept and to show how it would work. So low cost SDR, still a lot of them, right? There's a lot of different SDRs that you can, that, that you can buy. Uh, I wanted to start off with RTL SDR because it's relatively inexpensive. Um, $21, and again, it, the, 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 that price changes, right? Um, what's interesting, though, is that in this scheme, so the left column are pretty much the SDRs that I would like to explore. I have yet to explore the, the Pluto SDR, uh, but that is in my, in my plan. Uh, that is also inexpensive. What's nice about the Pluto SDR, uh, beyond, the RTL, beyond the RTL SDR, is it, it will allow me to actually um, receive signals that are much higher, right, than 7.5 gig. So if I want to do the same kind of um, experiment with the low pi and look at Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, I need the ability to uh, receive signals at a higher frequency. And so that's why the Pluto, the, the, the Pluto SDR is, is, is going to be nice here. Also what's interesting is that in addition to these transceivers, I, I wanted to look at what was already out there in terms of RF ranging transceivers. 
And there is uh, a module that's out there based on the SX1280 uh, uh, made by Simtech. It's very inexpensive. Um, it already has a ranging engine. And this sort of allowed me to do a quick setup within the experiment uh, to give me relative ranging information between uh, these, these two nodes. And so that pretty much has a lot of bandwidth, or has a, a lot of uh, options in terms of bandwidth of 125 kilohertz, 250, uh, and so forth. Uh, the next chart, pretty much, I want to describe just the components of it. Uh, so uh, with the different components, of course, the low pi, the key things here is that you have all these different transceivers. Uh, and then this gives you sort of an overview of what the RTL-SDR is. I'm sure you guys have been exposed to, to this before. So I just wanted to highlight that real quick. Um, one of the things that we're doing as far as creating the PUGS architecture is I'm also leveraging what I'm calling a carrier board. Uh, the carrier board allows me to bring in GPS uh, as well as an accelerometer. Um, so the way I did my experiments when I had the two devices and I was trying to range between them, um, I would uh, save off the GPS location between uh, each node, at, at each node, um, using this, as well as um, um, use this button to be able to, to like start it and stop it. So I made it, I sort of automated the process of sending uh, information back and forth between the two devices, and this helped out a lot. Also, I'm using a Raspberry Pi. Uh, that was a, the, what I wanted to make sure, try to keep things low cost. And of course, MicroPython that I'm leveraging to uh, actually change the frequencies of um, the uh, PyComs. So one of the things I'll talk about um, in, in the next slide is gonna be just the different parameters that I was sort of able to play around with when trying to create this PUGS um, PUG system. And, and then also you, you see Python there as well. All right, so, so, so what am I doing here? Really, I'm looking at two-way ranging. So if you don't understand two-way ranging, I'm able to send a signal from one node to, the, to a, a, a master and a slave, master sends to the slave, slave sends back to the master, and I'm able to calculate round trip. So when, I, when I'm trying to figure out is the, the, the time that it takes uh, for the master to send and I receive, and with that I'm able to get some kind of distance calculation between the two nodes. So you can imagine now if I have these, these two nodes and I have this calculation between two nodes, if I have multiple nodes I can start to add you know, those up and use those different um, ranging, I could use those different, use the different information about the ranges between these nodes and begin to start doing geolocation. But I wanted to at least talk about what's the baseline uh, architecture that I would have to have. And this is it here. So I have a master and a slave, I'm using a Raspberry Pi. The goal was to put GNU radio and the RF ranging algorithms on the Pi and then use the RTL-SDR as a passive listener uh, that will listen in to the communications between the master and the slaves. Uh, and a great talk by Matt, Knight, uh, by Matt Knight, uh, two, two GNU conferences, uh, I'll say ago, where he talked about lore. That's a great reference to sort of look at what um, the protocols are associated with lore and, and what was um, being done as, as far as preamble length and things like that. But here I wanted to get into at least the details of the hardware architecture that, that I use in order to actually do the calculations. And so what I'm going to get into here is a GNU radio uh, lower RF ranging Python block. That was the main thing that I wanted to, to do um, at this conference to sort of show the feasibility of creating a Python block in lower and actually doing the measurement of, 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 time, of the time of flight um, estimate between the master and the slave. So here's the, um, the, the flow graph of the block that I created. Uh, this is, again, very simple, not a lot. Not, not really complicated. This whole um, part of the flow graph here is just to convert uh, from the source. I had the RTL-SDRs. They, again, were saving uh, three seconds worth of data uh, every time as I was transmitting between the two nodes. Uh, and then the goal would be to actually calculate first the time difference of arrival associated with the, the, the master. So you can see that the signal that was captured is at a higher strength, of course, that was leaving the master. And then this is actually the return signal that's being provided by the slave. So if you're able to make a measurement of a time difference of arrival between um, th these packets and then also do a time difference uh, of arrival associated with uh, what, the, what the slave received and sent back, you're able to sort of account for um, the randomness that would occur uh, between when this was sending it back and also when the master was able to receive. So taking the differences and dividing by two, multiplying by the speed of light, I'm able to now get a measurement. Um, and this is a measurement that I call sort of a hybrid passive because 
Um, all I'm doing is, is listening in to the communications between the two PICOM devices. And then from there, I'm able to actually do a, a calculation of, uh, of ranging information. And so here, everything is within the Python block, of course, using uh, NumPy as part of that process. And I'm doing uh, cross correlations. Here, I also have a, an option to load in the actual match filter. I'm using a match filter that I collected with one of the strong signals that's using it as the representative match filter. And then I'm doing cross correlations in order to get these peaks. Now, we'll say that these peaks are associated with the down chirp portion of the lower signal. Uh, if I wanted to, to use the up chirp portion of the match filter, then I would have multiple peaks here. Uh, what's interesting here is also the PICOM allows you to change the preamble length. So instead of the preamble length being normally eight on the lower um, waveform, I actually made it 64. So it gave me a chance to actually use a longer preamble length. And now imagine if you want to do different experiments relative to P and T, you could actually change the um, you know, different parameters associated with this, which, which makes it you know, pretty neat. And again, that's all being programmed in MicroPython. So it, makes it, uh, it allows me to rapidly convey and create different type of configurations um, based on that. So here's sort of a zoomed in version of the, uh, the pugs. I actually brought one with me if, if anyone is, is interested in seeing it. Uh, pretty much this is the construction that I had. It's in a Raspberry Pi box. I uh, mounted the uh, PyCom to the carrier board here. And then you can see the setup where I had a Yagi uh, antenna associated with, the, um, with, with, with each node. And then I was able to set up uh, a, uh, a, a, an experiment to see whether or not my measurements of what I would expect to get for ranging uh, matched up with with, with what I was actually processing. Now, what's interesting here is that um, the RF ranging protocols, since it's written in MicroPython, there's a lot of different things I could do with that. And that, I love the flexibility of being able to, one, I could hop in frequency. So at this point for lore, um, it's at, you know, it's at from 902 to, to, to 928 megahertz, I was able to hop around uh, while changing the preamble. And so all of those combinations uh, is actually part of the data that I collected in order to work through my RF ranging uh, solution. So what do we care about RF range or why do we care? Where at ENSCO, we develop what we call a time and communications and ranging device. We normally operate around 22 megahertz uh, spread spectrum signal in order to generate um, sub-meter uh, ranging you know, between two devices. Here I wanted to say, well, assuming I don't have that, I want to use what's ever available as the COTS. Now I'm, now I'm sort of constrained to deal with at least the highest sampler that's available that's on the um, RTLSDR. So if I sample at 2 megahertz, I'm oversampling a little bit. I was assuming that my lower waveform is actually 500 kilohertz. So based on Kramer Rao bound, I'm not going to be able to get sub meter, but I would expect to get at least um, within, within 10 meters. And that was sort of the goal, because normally if you think about this, and I'm sampling at 2 mega samples per second, uh, and I'm using a lower signal, um, you would normally say if I want to do ranging, I would be roughly, um, the only resolution I would have would be roughly 150 meter resolution. And now I'm saying I want to try to achieve this camera round bound. Instead of having 150 meter resolution, I'm looking to get sub 10 meter resolution. And so the question is, how do you do that? Well, based on the processing, notice earlier I talked about I was doing the match filter and I was doing correlations. Well, if you apply super resolution algorithms to the actual peak of the correlators, you're able to get better uh, than what you would normally get in terms of your standard sampling. So what that allows me to do, at least at this point, is to do subsampling. And that now gives me the ability to, to, to try to get within this, this, this actual 10 meter range. And that was the sort of the motivation or the excitement to say, if I could take that for, um, if I can take lessons learned from what's been done in the past, in terms of what we are doing on our, on our radios, and also apply this within a construct of a COTS device. Now there's a, you know, a whole bunch of different things you could do uh, relative to using COTS devices uh, and the RF ranging that could support complementary p &T. So what does this mean? Well, actually what I was trying to do, the whole goal was to decouple the RF ranging that's associated with the device. So normally RF ranging is really part of it, I would say tightly coupled with the embedded system. The idea was to totally decouple it. So think of this as uh, loose coupled ranging. What it allows me to do is to now, um, if I make it loosely coupled, I can take any device. It doesn't have to be the low pi. I can take any transceiver that's doing communications and swap it out. Uh, I can also take any SDR. It doesn't have to be the RTL SDR. It could be the Pluto. 
And then I could rerun this experiment and see how good my RF ranging algorithms are working with the devices that I'm actually swapping in and out. So that's, part, that's sort of the benefit of, of this approach. And it also allows you to look at different type of um, sampling, different type of measurements. Uh, and, and, and it is the power of the, of the concept in terms of being able to, to look at you know, passively listening in to the communication link while being able to pro provide the RF ranging measurements without, of course, needing access to the actual transceiver the devices themselves. A couple of charts uh, coming up with just examples. This is a spectrogram of um, the master and slave. I showed you earlier in the plots with the uh, flow graph of what they looked like just from the autocorrelation side. Again, the measurements here is uh, a time difference of arrival associated with the master. The master, I'm sending a ping. Uh, the slave responds with a pong. And then I'm able to, to record that and then make that measurement uh, within that space. And then this is just, of course, a slave. So first the master sends it to the slave, and the slave responds back with the master. And then I'm able to make, the, make those actual measurements. So here's an example of an experiment that I want to talk to you uh, today about. Uh, I had a chance to go out um, to the field and say, all right, well, this is great. I have these concepts. Uh, but what can I use? And what, what's actually the real data that I can get out of this? Here what I did was I used the, the flexibility of the MicroPython uh, to actually hop around 26 frequencies uh, within the 900 megahertz ISM band. I uh, captured all that data with the RTLSDR, uh, and then I was applying the PUGS RF ranging algorithms to each data set. And then after doing that, um, I was able to, to, to determine how close I was and whether or not I was actually reaching the criminal route bound. Um, and then, of course, I had GPS measurements here, so I could take those GPS measurements and determine whether or not I was close or whether or not I was off. So this is sort of the setup of my experiment. Um, so these are results from the experiment. So out of total observations, and that's taking all the hot frequencies, um, I was able to get roughly like a mean of 112. And the true value is, um, is, is, is roughly um, around 117. So not exactly dead on, but not that far off either. Uh, and it had a standard deviation of 4.8 meters uh, with that. And if you look at the uh, second experiment, uh, I did where I moved it out uh, further. I was able to get a mean of 158, uh, where the, the true range was 164 um, for those observations. And I have two um, plots here because I, I did multiple experiments at each point. So that allowed me to at least have some redundancy in the data to see whether or not I was going to be um, you know, far off or either on. Um, so with, with all these measurements, it, 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 look, it looks pretty nice in terms of what I wanted to uh, get here. And then the last um, measurement I was to make, when I was able to make, they would show 197 meters, um, and the true range is actually 200 meters. So what this shows is that the feasibility of using very inexpensive SDRs uh, with common transceivers that you can get off the internet, uh, and you can actually use those for ranging. So you can imagine all the different combinations and possibilities one can make uh, by, 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 by sort of taking these concepts. And then uh, my last chart just talks about uh, where, where I want to go, especially with the GNU radio construct. Um, I want to you know, take the Python block that, that, um, that I was able to develop. The feasibility at least shows that you can get sub uh, 10 meter level ranging. Um, and what's interesting is that also with this, I believe there's a combination of things that we can do uh, relative to now an array. Uh, so imagine um, taking a bunch of pugs, uh, creating an array, and then also doing some type of angular arrival uh, within that GNU Radio Python block. So those are sort of the concepts, some of the things that I'm, I'm hoping to do with it. Uh, but uh, I was very pleased, at least with the results, to show how close that I could get to the current route bound uh, and using very inexpensive COTS software defined radios. And thank you very much, Will. Thanks. <laughs>